One is the loneliest number. But does it have to be, really? So you want to go on a cruise, but you don't have anyone to take along? Well, whether it's the fact that you're between relationships, you don't have a significant other, you, uh, your partner can't get away in the time that works for you, or for whatever reason, there's opportunities out there. Solo cruising seems to be an increasing trend. Let's take a look and see what it means to you. You know, solo cruising seems like a perfect vacation for a solo. Uh, you have your dining, you have dancing, uh, you have activities, uh, shows, entertainment, uh, uh, interesting ports of call all in one package. No wonder it's popular. But first, let's look at the ugly truth about solo cruising. And primarily, I'm talking about how it affects your pocketbook. Cruise lines have all these cabins on board the ship and they're all pretty much designed for double occupancy. That means there's at least two people in that room, each one of them paying their own price. So you can see why they would not want to give away a cabin that they could normally get twice the money for to a person that can only afford the single. That means at that point they're losing the money. So then they throw in what is known as a single supplement. And that sounds like something good for you, but it's not. So basically, if you get a cabin by yourself, the supplement is you basically wind up paying 100% of what another person would be where they staying in that room. So you basically come out paying for two people in the room when there's really only one of you staying there. And you should also look around for deals. Sometimes they will waive that supplement or reduce it. So there is possibilities. Royal Caribbean, I think is a good one. Uh, if you have 340 points in their, their uh, crown and anchor program, they will only charge you 50%. So that means you'll only be paying one and a half times what the going rate for that room is. Uh, some cruise lines actually offer solo cabins. Now these are fairly small places. Uh, as you would expect for being just a, a single person in there and they're not always in the best part of the ship. Plus, they don't seem to be readily available. Not everyone does it and when they do, they don't dedicate a whole lot of rooms to that much, you know, much preferring to have that double occupancy in a room. Um, and they're, they're, they go away quick uh, and what I've seen is solo cabins that wind up uh, increasing in price as more and more of them are booked. So the less uh, that are available on a particular cruise, they seem to ramp up in price to a point where you could actually wind up paying more for a solo cabin than you could have for an interior room at double occupancy. Craziness. So you're gonna have to determine, is claustrophobia gonna be in effect? Uh, I mean, these things are gonna be fairly small. Uh, for the most part, all I do in them is, is sleep and clean up, so it's not a big deal. You, you have to make your own decision regarding that. Some cruise lines, such as Norwegian, actually offer a little extra bonus. So if you're in a solo cabin, they also have a, a solo lounge that you can take advantage of, kind of giving you extra extra little space in there. Plus you get to see uh, some other, other solo travelers and that, that probably helps. And if you do wind up having to get a, a, a double occupancy stateroom, I would say go for the interior. Uh, they're much better priced than, than a lot of the other rooms and there's almost always an option where you can bid up to an upgrade. So you may wind up with a, a balcony cabin at a much reduced price and that's always a good thing. So how do you find these special deals? Well, there's a lot of ways. One, you can get a travel agent and they can look around for you. They have a lot of resources uh, and they can, they can find you things like this. Uh, second is do it yourself, obviously. Uh, and you can go to places like cruiseplum.com or, or in my case, I go to vacations to go and uh, cheapcruises.com. And you can go on there and kind of browse, use those as a search engine, if you will, and find the trip that you want and, and see what the absolute best price is. Um, sometimes, even if there's not a reduced single supplement, you can come out pretty good. I went on a recent uh, MSC cruise. I was able to get a double occupancy cabin on a five-day cruise, and it, it wound up costing me less than $100 per day, uh, even at double occupancy. So that was a deal I jumped on. Now, some of these you have to be a little bit flexible and, and be willing to, to travel quickly to, to catch these last minute deals. Or if you're more adventurous, you can actually sign up in little apps like My Cabin Mate, where you can find other people that are looking for people to share a cabin. And you basically just go through, and just like you would in a dating app, looking for the right combination of people that are gonna be able to share your room just to split the cost. Uh, 
I don't know that I feel comfortable doing that, but it is an option out there that you can uh, look into if you like. You can also sign up with travel groups, uh, some probably in your own little neighborhood. So you get on there, you can, you can meet people and maybe find some other people that are interested in a similar cruise or the same cruise that you're going on and split a room. Uh, you can also join Facebook groups uh, that are dedicated to that ship and sail dates if you want to get down to that level. Uh, and, and actually you know, start meeting some people there and maybe you can find someone to, to share a cabin with. Or if nothing else, maybe you can see some other people that are going on the cruise and, and have some familiar faces once you get on there. Alrighty, so now you've booked your cruise, you've paid for it, you're on the ship. How do you deal with being a solo cruiser? Well, first let's look at the benefits. One is you can pretty much do anything you want all the time. That is a hard thing to quantify. Uh, there's uh, all the space that you have in your cabin is all yours to use however you like. Uh, there's no snoring except your own and hopefully you don't hear that. Uh, and then you don't have to worry when you book excursions about trying to get something that makes everybody happy. You basically, again, do what it is you want to do. First thing you're gonna have to figure out is do you want to be alone on this cruise, uh, even though you're traveling as a solo, or do you wanna meet with people? So you're gonna have to decide that. And, and neither one's a bad answer. I mean, it's your vacation, do with it what you will. Uh, let's look first if you wanna kinda have more, more solitary time. Well, there are a lot of ways to do that. Uh, the ships have uh, usually a library on board. There's upper decks that, that are lightly uh, traveled, I guess, that you can find a, a deck chair there looking out in the water pretty much by yourself. The Carnival Pride had a whole little garden area that just had portholes along the side and little seating areas, and it was kind of understood to be kind of a quiet place. Uh, you can also go to some bars. They're not populated 24-7, uh, so sometimes you can go in there. Uh, the buffet, you can go find your little quiet table at the buffet area, the seating area, get you something to drink, read a book, whatever. Uh, there are usually seats by the windows so you can see outside. So you're not losing a thing and, and you gain that, that, well, plus air conditioning, you gain that solitude that you're looking for. There's game rooms. You can even sit around the pool and kind of keep to yourself, uh, even though it probably will be a bit noisy out there. Uh, I myself discovered the lifeboat deck on several cruises I've been on. And you basically can go out there and you're close to the water. You get to see the, the, the waves and, uh, and just sit there and ponder the universe if that's your thing. One of the big questions that comes up a lot with solo cruisers is how do I handle dining, eating alone? I don't want to be with people. Uh, so if, if you actually do want to be more solitary when you dine, uh, you have the option of, of the dining room and the specialty restaurants. You can ask the maitre d' set you at a table uh, built for one or even two and just don't fill the other spot. Uh, you can ask for bar seating if it's available. That's actually, to me, a very good way. You can sit there, you can stare straight ahead if that's your thing. Or if you got people on either side, you can strike up a conversation that's pretty light and airy. There are a lot of solo diners, so you're not gonna feel awkward or out of place because you're the only one there by yourself. That's, that's just not gonna happen. And who knows, you may wind up striking up a conversation with another diner close by. I had a comment from one of the viewers that said, I cruised solo for the first time in September this year, and I mostly ate at specialty restaurants or the main dining room. Uh, I avoided eating at the buffet because there wasn't anyone I could leave behind to watch the table while I went off to get more food or drinks. And yes, I could see that problem, and I, I faced that myself. Uh, my suggestion is bring a crappy book, like a paperback book you don't care anything about, or, or if you, know, you don't mind losing it, bring in, in another book. And you can go out, you know, claim your spot, put down the book. Uh, I usually went by and grabbed a plate and silverware anyway, and put in the, the as like a place setting at that table. And that pretty much lets everybody know that, yeah, there's a human here, so don't, don't take that spot or don't clean it up. Uh, I will say that the, the cleaning staff is amazing, that if, if you walk away from your food and they think you're done, it is cleaned off in a heartbeat. So you may find yourself coming back and, and seeing uh, either your spot has been cleaned or there's somebody else sitting there. Uh, so again, you can bring a book. That's, that's a really good way to do it. Uh, alternately, if you don't mind, you can walk up and ask somebody else that's, that's eating alone if you can share the table with them. And that way you've kind of got it covered. Uh, you know, very seldom will you get turned down by somebody to just share a space. Not saying they'll guarantee to be conversation, but you may not want that in the first place. So that, that works out pretty well as well. And if you really want to take it to extremes and you absolutely do not want to eat with other people, there is room service. So you can sit back in your room with your television on your bed or whatever 
and, uh, and, and enjoy your meals. Whatever works for you at the end of the day. Now, if you don't want to be by yourself, if you're just cruising alone, but you're not, you know, you don't really need a break from people, there's a lot of options. You can go to the main dining room uh, and, and basically ask the maitre d' or the, the, the greeter there that you would like to sit at a shared table or, or an open table, as they may call it. Uh, in fact, I would ask for a large open table because that way there's more people there. It gives you a better chance to, to meet somebody new as well as they can carry some of the weight of the conversation as opposed to if you were at like a table for, for four. Uh, you know, so, so uh, that's the way I would go. I love meeting people this way. You pretty much have light conversation going on. There's a lot of people to share with and you can hear some very interesting stories and maybe make a friend. Oh my. And I've also found that the, uh, the large tables like that are often filled with other solo travelers. So it's actually kind of cool. You can, you can compare notes, share stories, things like that. And again, maybe find a friend. Uh, you can look into the chef's table type events or, or whatever that may be. The, the food lab, I think it's called on, on uh, Virgin. Uh, but basically it's an event that you share. You don't have to be there with anybody else. Uh, you're gonna be at kind of a, a, a shared table anyway. And it gives you a common experience that, that helps you to have conversation with other people, both at the event as well as afterwards when you're out on the decks. It's just a really, really cool thing. Now, getting away from food, how do you meet people? Well, well put yourself out there. Uh, there are mixers on the ship of, of all shapes and sizes you can have. Uh, actually, there are usually mixers for solo travelers or single travelers, uh, LGBTQ um, uh, veterans. There's just all sorts of different little mixers that they have, some hosted, some unhosted. Just go in there, grab a drink, sit around, and, and talk if it suits you. You can kind of see some of the other people. You may get more familiar with them. That may make it easier to actually broach those conversations. There's a lot of games going on. There's trivia. There's usually some sort of sports challenge. Uh, there's... there's um, all sorts of things that you could do to actually interact with other people and again kind of getting that little that little common that common experience thing to kind of make make life a little easier so you can see some other faces around the deck that you know it does help you can book group-based excursions and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit uh, but you can get on your facebook pages you know reach out to these people that are going to be cruising with you see if anybody else has the same desire to see a certain thing you know at some of your ports of call and and set it up that's that's a great great way to also kind of get in with people and again we'll talk about you know safety and things here in a little bit you can sit around the edge of the swimming pools uh, seats are really hard to get uh, it doesn't matter whether you're so low or not uh, you got to strike early and strike fast you know mark your chair and be there and don't be a chair hog by the way uh, and there you probably have the option of, of reading a book and nobody's going to mess with you or you can strike up conversation as the case may be your mileage may vary uh, bars to me it was a great way to meet people uh, as well as the uh, the little mixers I talked about earlier that were usually at a bar you can go there uh, in the evenings and afternoons uh, sit at the bar or, or whatever and just talk to those around you uh, piano bars were an amazing thing that you can sit around and, and sing along and talk to the piano player and the people around you and just have a, a really good group activity without knowing anyone there. Uh, you can meet people at shows. You're going to be sitting in there and, and usually it, it's pretty well, uh, pretty well populated so you're going to have people there. But I would ask stop the conversation when the show starts you know nobody wants to hear your conversation around you probably not even the people that you're trying to talk to so enjoy it as a as a, a time killer but then once the show starts you know be quiet uh, you can go to the casino that way you have kind of both opportunities if you want to be alone you can sit at a slot machine or a blackjack table you're not forced to interact with others though the options there uh, if you want more of a group activity uh, the craps table is is just a fun fun place normally uh, as, as well as some of the other games like roulette, things like that. You can, you can get out there and kind of, again, that shared experience we keep talking about. And this last one's probably a little controversial uh, and you don't want to take it too far, but you can talk to the staff. I had a great time talking to these people that are from all over the world, uh, but keep in mind, they don't get a lot of time off and they're usually just you know, busy as they can be. So, so don't try to monopolize their time, but you know, if you have 
uh, like your bartender mixing a drink that's not busy with other things or your barista or, or whatever making you coffee, you can share some stories. And that also helps, you know, give you some of that human interaction so you don't feel like a hermit, you know, in the midst of all these people. Alrighty, now on to port calls. And this, this is where we get into the excursion thing we talked about a little bit ago. Uh, if, you, if you have an excursion you like and you can book it because that's what you want to do and not have to worry about anybody else, um, you know, get on your Facebook page, get on the other, other little forums and stuff, go, go to Cruise Critic, and you can check out and interact with other people and find out what some of the other people going on the excursion you're interested in, uh, and maybe reach out, and that's a, that's a great start to, to meeting your new people. Um, some suggestions though, uh, there's safety in numbers, so I would, I would book excursions that are offered by the cruise lines. Uh, there's almost always people that are also signed up for these excursions and the, the vendors have been vetted so it's a very, very safe and, and usually well-run uh, trip. And uh, if something goes wrong or something is amiss, the ship's not gonna leave you behind. And that's that's an awesome bit of, of mental security, if nothing else. If you're more adventurous, you can hire a private driver to take you out to some of the tourist areas. Uh, I would suggest that you, you start early on that and again, try to vet them, uh, you know, and, and do your due diligence. You know, you don't know these people, so so see, look at reviews, you know, things like that. See, see if there's something that, that gives you a warm and fuzzy. Uh, that gives you a little bit more security than just going up and trying to find like a random uh, cab to take you somewhere unknown. Uh, and again, you're not protected in that respect. You go off, you know, with a driver or a cab and something happens and you run late, you may be standing there on that, that dock alone waving to the ship as it leaves. And if you decide not to take an excursion of all, I would say, I would recommend that you kind of stay in the port area or at least in the touristy type zones instead of kind of reaching out and doing other things. Uh, um, and even then, if, if there's other people that you may not even know that are out there that are, that are also just kind of wandering around, ask if you can join them. See if you can share the cost of a cab ride. Uh, things like that. Just just something to give that little extra bit of, of uh, security and protection to you. So if solo cruising sounds like something you might be interested in, jump in. Jump in and go. It's a great trip. Uh, there is going to be some anxiety. I'm telling you, you're going to be a little bit nervous. Uh, but once you get in and, and things start going and they're going pretty well and you kind of figure out some of these tips and tricks like I, I talked about above, you know, it, it, it becomes just a, a, a really nice thing. It, it's probably a more relaxing trip than when you go with your friends and family because again, you can do what you want, when you want, if you want. So it's, it's, it's pretty great. So don't wait till all the stars align. Jump in, do your research, start planning right now. Oh, and don't forget the sunscreen.